Hello there and welcome back to The Shed. Today's topic of conversation is going to be drizzling. Uh, I've got four new scripts for you uh, that will allow you to uh, incorporate drizzling into your stacking if you wish to do that. Um, we'll also be talking about the associated subject of dithering um, and how it all kind of fits together. And I will be showing you a few examples uh, for Sea Star and Dwarf of uh, the use of dithering and the use of drizzling and just try and make a little bit of sense as to when you should and when you shouldn't use it. So without any further ado, let's go back to the desktop. Okay then, so uh, first up, what is drizzling? Well, drizzling was a technique that was developed for the Hubble team. And the reason they developed it was that when they put the Hubble Space Telescope up in orbit, um, obviously sensor technology was not very well advanced compared to what it is today. And um, Hubble's cameras are actually quite low resolution. Uh, and they very quickly found that the cameras were pretty much obsolete. Obviously they couldn't just go up into space and change the cameras. So they had to come up with um, a software solution to get more resolution out of the camera because the problem they had is that their optics actually had a much higher resolution than the camera did, which incidentally, is just, it, that's a situation that is known as undersampling. Now, they came up with the idea of drizzling, um, which is a way of recovering some of the lost resolution and actually recovering some of the lost details. Uh, and the way this is done is by a method called uh, interpolation. Now, for drizzling to work, there are some prerequisites that are essential. Uh, the first one is that the data should be undersampled. So in other words, there needs to be uh, some data to recover. If your setup isn't undersampled, then basically you've got all the detail you're ever going to get. So that's the first thing you need is undersampled data. And the second thing you need is to dither the data. Um, now I'm going to kind of explain all these things in a bit more detail as we go through this. But the idea of dithering the data is that you keep moving the camera at regular inter intervals several pixels in random directions. What they then do is they interpolate these different subs and they can start to infer details that were kind of previously buried in the data. So another thing that affects how well drizzling works is your seeing. So if your seeing is very good, then that will tend to make you more undersampled. Uh, whereas if your seeing is bad, then you will be more oversampled. So you have to take that into account as well. That's also part of the whole resolution um, kind of formula. Uh, so as you can see, it's it's all really quite complicated. You, so, you know, it's hard to give you. There is no uh, simple one size fits all kind of answer to whether you should drizzle or not drizzle. The important thing to bear in mind is the two main prerequisites of drizzling, which is to have undersampled data and for the data to have been dithered. So let's move on now to the first example and I'm going to show you some actual examples of dithering in action. Okay so first up let's just take a look at the C star. I've got um, a number of C star subs loaded up here in Blink in PixInsight and this, is, this enables me to effectively run them like a movie so we can we can see them animated. And you can clearly see that, uh, and I've calculated, it's about every fifth frame. Um, you can clearly see that it's making quite a clear movement in a random direction. So that definitely shows that the C star is doing some dithering. Um, so next one we're going to have a look at is the Dwarf 2. And we'll just run this in the same way. Now you can see that that is, uh, it is moving. Uh, it's much more gentle. Um, let me see if I can just um, zoom in a little bit on that. So 
So I think if I stop it a minute, if I show you how much it's moving, I think it's only really moving uh, a pixel or two at a time, and that's not really enough. I would definitely want to see something more, well, probably 20 pixels at a time. Uh, so I don't really think we can say the Dwarf 2 is dithering. Uh, next up, we're going to have a look at drizzling. We'll start off looking at um, some C star data, uh, M51. Um, I'm just going to drag that across to there. So I've got two kind of versions here. Um, on the left hand side, I've got one that is not drizzled. Uh, and on the right hand side, I've got one that is drizzled. Uh, let me just see if I can get them the same size. Yeah, that's better. Now, um, as you can see, really, I mean, they don't really look too much different um, when they're zoomed out like this. But if we just uh, zoom in a bit closer. Now you can you can very clearly see uh, there's a difference in pixelation. The pixelation in the non-drizzled result is uh, much coarser than the pixelation in the drizzled result. And I'm going to just show you something. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take the no drizzle result and I'm going to actually resample it. Um, so if I just do that now, oops, wrong one, start again. Wasn't that one I wanted to do? That's with drizzle. I thought I said no drizzle. No, oh, well. Start again. Try that. Right, okay, we've done it this time. Now, if I drag that back across, voila. I think you can see there's really uh, not very much difference uh, at all now between the drizzled one and the no drizzled one. But I didn't have to go through all the pain of drizzling it. All I did was resampled the final image, which took, as you can see, a couple of seconds. So uh, very quick. The real point about um, drizzling is it, it's not just about making the stars look smoother, which it clearly does. And actually, because part of what drizzling does is to resample uh, images to, to upscale them, it will um, it will always make the stars look a bit better. There's no doubt about that. The real question is, does it actually pull out any more detail? It's very, very subtle. It's very, very subtle, but I think you can see maybe a tiny little bit more detail in the right hand image. But um, certainly here, look, you can certainly see this area here. I think this whole area is a, it has a little bit more resolution than than the equivalent area on the left hand side. You can see there's this kind of a U shape here is certainly much clearer on this side than this side. OK, so what, let's move on to the some dwarf data, different binning going on here. We've got some 2K uh, 2x2 binning, and we got some 4K 1x1 binning. And again, I've, I've just zoomed in, um, you know, let you just see what it is we're looking at, M13. That might be quite good. Let's have a look at that. Now, OK, so the 2K without drizzle is uh, obviously uh, a lot more pixelated and a, a, has a lot less detail than the 2K with drizzle. Um, so that might be an argument to use drizzle with 2K data. Um, Again, I'm going to just um, actually resample. So I'm just going to um, 
Let's find it 2K no drizzle. Make sure I've got that selected. So I'm just going to resample this. Now, same thing, um, you know, what have we achieved here, really? Have we achieved much? I mean, unfortunately, this, this data is not so good. So it's a bit hard to tell. Although I have an idea of another experiment we can try in a minute, just to... Um, yeah, I, I mean, again, there may be some slight subtle differences but oh god they are subtle tell you what I'm going to try and do I, I think it would be interesting I'm going to just try and use uh, blur exterminator on these images and the reason I want to do that is because blur exterminator will try and extract more detail and it might make any differences uh, between the two images a little more obvious. So let's just see what it comes up with. If I apply it to both sides. So, not drizzled on the left, drizzled on the right. Well, I think that speaks for itself, really, that I can't see any real difference there. Uh, and once we get on to the 4K, so if we just have a look at this uh, Andromeda. And again, we'll try and find some area of detail, I think. That's probably quite a good one. Okay, so that's with drizzle on the right, without drizzle on the left. Um, I mean, you can hardly see any difference anyway because you've got a much higher resolution to start with. I think there's a little less noise on the right hand side uh, and if we zoom in a bit further I mean you can see with the detail I don't really think there's much difference if we zoom in a little closer um, there is a slight difference here obviously because um, again uh, the drizzle has just upscaled the image again, but made it huge, of course. I mean, it's given us, uh, if we look at the image sizes, we've got 3840 wide here. The image is on here is 7680 wide, you know, so it's four times. This image is four times larger than this image. To be quite honest, the increase in resolution is probably not worth the increase in file size. Um, but uh, let's have a look at... Um, Let's have a look at where's my um, resampler. There it is. So let's have a look at this one and resample it. 4K no drizzle, 200%. So actually, there's something to bear in mind. If you want to improve your stars a bit on a finished stack, then maybe a, a quick resample is quite a good thing to do. But um, there you are. Uh, and again, we've all we've done is resampled it. And I would suggest that there's not much difference. Uh, let's try and find a bit of detail, uh, a bit of a dust line or something to look at here. Let's drag that across. Yeah, well, there you have it. Okay, then, so what can we take away from this? Um, my view is that um, we can say that the uh, C-Star S50 
does seem to fulfill the two criteria, which is that it's under sampled data and that it dithers. So I think it's probably worth drizzling that, or it could be. It's, it's certainly worth trying it. Um, with the Dwarf 2, it doesn't dither. So in, in my view, it's probably not worth drizzling. I think, you know, you could basically use a simple image up sample on the finished stack. If you felt that, you know, your two by two stars were a, a bit blocky, you, you could smooth them out a bit. You could do that. But to go to, to the whole thing of dithering, I just don't think you're going to really achieve anything uh, other than wasting a lot of time and resources. One final thing to consider here as well is that when you upsample data, you're spreading it out more thinly, which means to make up for that, you need to capture more data, so capture for longer. And the other thing is that when you um, spread things out over more pixels, you also are increasing the overall noise. So it's just worth considering that. Um, but as I said earlier on, there is no one size fits all kind of thing here. It's down to seeing and the other factors. So um, the thing to do is to see what works for you. OK, so as promised, I'm going to show you how to resample. Um, first of all, let's have a look at uh, PixInsight. So we go to process, all processes, resample. We select the view, which in this case is 4K, no drizzle. We select the amount by which we wish to resample, which in this case is the equivalent of a two times drizzle, which is 200%. Everything else stays the same. Click the apply button. And there we are, and that's done. OK, so here we are in Cyril. I've got the same image up. Uh, so I go to Image Processing, Geometry, Resample. Again, 200%. Click Apply. And we're done. Didn't even see that happen, but anyway, that has now resampled. So that's literally all you've got to do. Oh, well, that's about it for today. And I, I hope you found this video um, a little bit useful. Hope it's given you an idea uh, whether or not to use drizzling when you're processing your data. Um, if you're using a one-shot color camera, of course, you can use these scripts as well. Uh, you need to just then consider what your sampling is, whether you're undersampling or oversampling your, your data. Um, obviously, that's a, another topic, and I'm not going to get into that today, but we will come back to that at some point in the future. Anyway, in the meantime, thank you very much for watching. Goodbye for now, and hopefully see you again soon. Bye-bye.